Well, hello the internet, you're with Got That Funk, and this is a video response to my friend Dan Brown, also known as Pogo Bat here on YouTube. He recently posed a question in one of his videos, on balance, are e-cigarettes a good thing or a bad thing? Well, how you doing, Dan? It's been years since I've sent you a video response, and I hope this one finds you in good spirits. I've got some pretty strong opinions about this subject, so I'm glad you've initiated the conversation, and I hope after you've had a chance to sort of, you know, look over the various responses you get and process them, that you'll take the time to leave me a comment down below. Now, before I go into my opinions about this subject, I suppose I should declare my personal biases, right? Uh, I should say straight off the bat, I'm not a smoker, and I never have been a smoker, so I've never had to quit smoking. Uh, if I have a personal bias, it's this. Uh, one of my strongest, most cherished beliefs is that adults should be the sovereign of their own body. As long as your personal behavior does not adversely affect other people, you should more or less be allowed to do whatever you want. I feel so strongly about that, it's difficult to overstate it. And I think e-cigarettes fall into that category. The vapor that people inhale and exhale when they puff on an e-cigarette is not harmful to anybody else in the vicinity like cigarette smoke is or can be. So I don't really think anybody has a, a sufficient reason to object if someone is vaping in their presence. Um, you might find it distasteful to see someone putting something to their mouth and exhaling some vapor, but I'm sorry, it's not hurting you. So, you know, if you're uncomfortable, lump it. <laughs> That's my opinion. Um, now, I am acquainted with quite a few people who smoke cigarettes. Almost everybody that I know who smokes has tried to quit at at least one time in their life. Some of my friends who smoke have tried to quit many, many times and failed. But I am acquainted with at least half a dozen people who have quit smoking with the help of e-cigarettes who couldn't quit smoking any other way. Uh, what's my rationale for saying that? Well, the fact is all these people tried other ways. Uh, they tried cold turkey, uh, they tried weaning themselves off by smoking less and less every day, they tried the nicotine spray, the nicotine gum, the nicotine patches, and none of those methods worked for them, whereas e-cigarettes have worked for them. And I think that uh, anything that helps to get people off of smoking cigarettes, uh, if that's their choice, um, is a good thing for the individuals and it's also good for society as well because it means we'll have less cases of lung cancer and heart disease for a start. So e-cigarettes are good for the individual and society in that sense, but let's call a spade a spade. Uh, e-cigarettes don't have all the carcinogens in the vapor that tobacco has in the smoke, but they do still have the nicotine and the manufacturers of e-cigarettes market their product on the basis that they're there to help people quit smoking, and it is certainly true that that can be the case. But if we're being blunt, we should have to admit out loud that the manufacturers of e-cigarettes manufacture an addictive product, and it's their true desire to get you off of tobacco and hooked on their product instead. But going back to what I said before, if someone chooses of their own free will to become addicted to vaping, that's their business. And I don't think any of us have a right to tell them that they're doing something they shouldn't do or that they ought not to be allowed to do. Um, so there's that. But I do think that uh, there is a slight risk that e-cigarettes can be taken up by the young instead of cigarettes. And if the pundit that you showed on your uh, video clip saying that there's a risk that e-cigarettes might renormalize smoking, I think if that's what they mean, that young people might take it up instead of cigarettes, then I agree that potential exists. I have in fact seen adolescent teens walking around smoking e-cigarettes, and they obviously seem to think that it's as edgy and cool as people did in the 50s and 60s and 70s about smoking tobacco. If on the other hand the pundit means that it might renormalize smoking, uh, if, if what they mean by that is vaping might become a sort of gateway drug to graduating on to smoking tobacco. I think that's an absurd contention. Uh, if there's any data in that regard, I'd be very surprised. And if there is data which proves that to be correct, I'd be quite happy to revise my opinion. But I do think it's very unlikely that that's the case. 
I think anybody who's inclined to smoke tobacco isn't going to start with vaping. They're going to go straight to the tobacco. And I think that pertains to young people and people of a, uh, an adult age. Um, so I do think e-cigarettes are very good for the individuals uh, insofar as they help them quit smoking. But it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to quit altogether if you carry on vaping. And since it's an addictive product, I think that risk exists. Um, but I do think it's the lesser of two evils. As regards its impact on society, um, I can't see how it's a bad thing overall. Um, like I say, we should keep e-cigarettes out of the hands of young people. But it's already illegal to sell e-cigarettes to people under the age of 18. And the, uh, the thing is, a lot of youngsters who take up smoking have at least one parent who smokes. So it's very easy for them to obtain cigarettes or tobacco because they can just nick it from their parents. That's a little bit more problematic as it comes to e-cigarettes because a lot of people who smoke an e-cigarette only have the one e-cigarette they smoke with. And that being so, they'll notice it if it gets gone, if it gets stolen. So um, I don't really think that uh, it's as easy to get your hands on an e-cigarette if you're sort of 13 as it is to get your hands on tobacco. The risk is still there, of course, but, you know, that's always going to be the case. Anything that we have in society which is potentially uh, dangerous is potentially dangerous for children, and we need to take whatever steps we can take to keep them out of the hands of children. Same with poison or anything like that, you know. Um, but generally speaking, just because we don't want kids to have it doesn't mean we should try to dissuade adults from having it. So that's where my head's at on this subject, Dan. I would love to hear what you've got to say about it once you've sort of made up your mind which side of the fence you fall down on. So please leave me a response in the comments section when you've had a chance to process everything that you see on this subject because I would love to hear about it. And to you and to all my uh, viewers, I want to thank you for watching this video and putting up with the horrible fan noise in the background. <laughs> um, basically, my webcam keeps crashing my computer, and when it doesn't crash, it makes this horrible fan noise. I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. So if you people still want me to make videos, you're just going to have to put up with the damn background noise. And I am abjectly sorry about it. Okay, anyway, thanks again for watching this video, and until next time, may all your ups and downs be ups.